National Signing Day. Uh, you see a uh, culmination of a lot of hard work and effort that goes in by our support people, uh, Ian Dino in particular, uh, our assistant coaches, uh, and a lot of people on campus. Uh, we have a, a lot of faculty, a lot of administration that are extremely helpful through this process. Um, you know, the, the class of 22 uh, was still slightly atypical uh, in the process that we had, a, we had a follow. We could not have any of these young men on campus in a football uh, driven visit until June 1st. And so a lot of them uh, were able to get to campus uh, on their own accord or setting things up through admissions or through uh, an academic advisor somewhere on campus uh, on their own. Uh, and really unfortunate, they, they might have been right across campus and we couldn't have anything to do with them at those times. Um, and that's where you see, I think from the, from the 31 young men that we signed, uh, you see that we tried to hit the, the Midwest uh, we tried to make sure we emphasized kids that we could get here, kids that we could create a relationship with in a relatively short amount of time uh, because we couldn't have them on campus nearly as much. And uh, once we could in the month of June, uh, then we had them on here as often as we could. And a lot of these kids probably ended up getting here two or three different times, if not four different times. Uh, over the course of the last two weekends, we've had 23 of them uh, on campus for their official visits. And um, I was just making a comment in the hallway. Um, when signing day goes well, there's no surprises. That means it was a good day. And so uh, I'm going to buzz through, kind of just give a little bit of feedback on the kids, and then I'll open it up for questions. Of course, you know, we, we signed our quarterback, Nathan Hayes, a young man out of uh, St. Charles East High School, uh, highly competitive, was, was at camp, which gives us three days to really jump into his football IQ, his leadership abilities, and identify if he's the, the right fit for, for Bison football. Um, you know, him and, and Coach Hedberg have an outstanding relationship through this recruiting process and really looking forward to seeing him continue to flourish. Uh, we'll get him here as soon as we can this summer. Um, and, and just like uh, quarterbacks of, of previous uh, signing classes, the minute you're called quarterback and you come to NDSU, uh, you better have great leadership. You, you better get locked in because there's going to be a lot of expectations for you. Uh, at the tight end position, we, we, we signed a couple guys, um, again, feeling that Roster management is a little bit of an unknown. Uh, we're going to graduate a fair number of kids here in the next two to three years. Uh, tight ends, I believe there's four or five if you count the fullbacks. Offensive linemen, in the next two years, we're going to graduate five. So this class was really heavy emphasis on big, long bodies that can grow and develop and be on the line of scrimmage. Uh, Kelby Azure. Uh, tight end, played a lot of deep defense, great nine-man football player out of Northwood High School. Played every sport I think they offer up there. Uh, I mean, he's all state, golf, um, track, baseball, basketball, extremely busy. Um, and uh, it's going to be a good one just from right up the road, and, and we're excited to have them here uh, as well. Nate Forstek, uh, a big, long tight end uh, from over at Bayport. Uh, Gary Westerman's his head football coach, 6'4", 250 right now, anticipate – uh, could be one of those long bodies that grows into an offensive tackle. We'll see how uh, the training table, see how our nutritionists and our strength staff do with him. But uh, he does have a, a brother that plays offensive line at Illinois State. Uh, Luke Kokat, uh, I think, is, is, is probably uh, you know, under the radar a little bit. Guy came to camp, really turned our heads there. Extremely physical, uh, only 6'2", 6'3", 225 right now. Uh, but I think has a ton of upside, ton of potential. Uh, really looking forward to getting him on campus. I know uh, Tyler Roll is excited about him and all these guys. Uh, then the last tight end is Caden Zenzen. You know, I, we probably identified Caden Zenzen as a sophomore. Uh, we're at the time recruiting another young man from Barnesville, and we saw this big, long joker running up and down the basketball court, and it was Caden. And since then, I think we've had pretty good rapport uh, with his proximity to NDSU. He's been over here a number of times, has an outstanding relationship with Coach Roll, and, and, and really, you know, 6'4", 203. Um, I, I think by the end of the school year, he's probably going to be 215. By the end of the summer, he's going to be 225. One of those young men that's just is so active in everything. Uh, I think his best days are ahead of him, and there's a lot of development yet to be had. Uh, at the wide receiver position, uh, again, we kind of got a little bit of a mix of both. We got some outside receivers. We got some inside receivers. Um, you know, as the, as far as outside receivers, Makai Collins, Carson Hegerly, Kellen Entz 
uh, all big, long kids, all came to camp, all run really well, uh, all got exceptional hands. We saw that at camp. Uh, they, they were all here, if not for three days. Some of them even came back for a fourth or fifth day um, just to prove that, that they could be bison. Uh, and then you have uh, Cedric uh, Cedric Wall uh, can be an inside receiver. Cedric's from Rosemont House, High School. Uh, we've had a lot of good football players from Rosemont. Um, Zach Vra, Dimitri Williams, uh, the Otterdahl. Uh, they're not football players, but the Otterdahl brothers. Um, so it, it's been a, a great place for NDSU athletics to go to Rosemont High School. Uh, Carson, tremendous upside, big-time basketball player, big-time football player, probably the best player in the state this year, owns a number of records over at West Fargo. Um, really excited to have him. Makai had some offers from some Power 5 schools, um, but thought this was the best place for him to be. State championship, 13-0 football team. I think if you look through uh, the bios that, uh, that Ryan uh, created, you're going to see a lot of our kids were on state championship teams and or captains of their football team. And I think that's always something that goes unnoticed when you start through the recruiting process. Here, that's pretty important. Uh, we want guys that are self-starters, self-motivated, and, and, and leaders. Um, other receiver, John Gores, a young man from Fargo-Shanley, had an unbelievable career, 128 receptions, almost 2,000 yards receiving. Uh, his dad is Gerald Gores, uh, the Hall of Fame track coach, uh, women's track coach uh, who was here in NDSU for a number of years. Um, and it's always great to see these legacy members here. Uh, we've already talked about a couple of them in Carson and uh, – and John, and, and John, and there'll be a couple other ones later, but uh, uh, that tells me that people truly appreciate this university, the city of Fargo-Moorhead, and uh, want to be part of this program. Uh, offensive line, a uh, number of, of, of big, big kids, really talented young men, and I think all of them you're going to see have room to grow uh, physically. Uh, Caden Chadwick, uh, outstanding all-region player from Velva High School, out in central uh, North Dakota, uh, 6'5", 270 pounds right now, still skinny. He walks in here, big baseball player, uh, was here on an official visit just a couple weeks ago, really excited to have him. Ben Goldie, I think he might be the, the steal of the class. Uh, Rapid City, Stevens High School, 6'7", 290 pounds right now, but you put 290 on 6'7", it doesn't look very big at times. You know, his shoulders are, are broader than his hips. He's a great-looking kid playing basketball right now, getting up and down the court, really excited about his potential and just the frame that you have to work with. And, and you know, giving that you know, blank canvas to a guy like Jim Kramer is going to be exciting to see what he can do with him. Devin Lockerbie, both mom and dad are alum here. The, I couldn't even get out the offer. And he, yes, he's coming. That's how excited they were. Um, you know, I – Mom might be in the suitcase when he shows up this summer. She's so excited about him being a bison. But uh, uh, comes from a really good program. Ned Lewis is his high school football coach. Uh, I've gotten to know Ned, and I know that uh, Devin's going to do a great job here for us. Mateo Noriega, uh, big offensive lineman, 6'4", 275 pounds from Burnsville, Minnesota. Uh, really good player. Uh, really going to be an interior lineman for us, same as Devin. Uh, was on his official visit last week. I, I think not only did we get a commitment out of uh, Mateo, but his, his younger brother, Carlos, who's in sixth grade, is going to be an engineer here. He's already told me. Um, he's smarter than all of us in this room put together right now. Um, we, we took the guys out to uh, laser tag at uh, Thunder Road this weekend, and, of course, Carlos had to go because he felt like being shorter – smaller, he was going to have an advantage in the laser tag. And I think he did. He, he told me the next morning he got second. So, but it was fun to have. And that's, that's the family atmosphere that we're trying to create here within our program. Uh, Max Rader, 6'6", 250-pound offensive lineman from De Pere, Wisconsin, or up by the Green Bay area. Uh, Max has kind of had an a, a unusual senior year. Uh, they played a spring season a high school in Wisconsin, Torres Labrum, the last game of the year. Missed uh, probably the half to a majority of his senior year this year. Played at the end, playing basketball right now. Did a lot of our recruitment off a of junior film or spring film, if you will. Uh, dad's the head football coach uh, at his high school. Uh, Going to be a huge, huge frame. Uh, 6'6", 250, a lot of room to grow, a lot of room to continue to develop. I love the fact that a lot of these guys are multi-sport athletes. I especially like when these offensive linemen are, are either wrestlers or basketball players running up and down a court or you know, 
on the, on the mat with great pad level, understanding that leverage is, is always going to be a benefit. Defensive line, uh, a number of guys. Toby Aneni, uh, defensive end from East Ridge High School. Uh, Toby also plays tailback for East Ridge, one of the biggest tailbacks probably in the metro area. Here's a quick stat for you. Last year in track, he has a, a confirmed 11 uh, Explosive, big athlete. You know, when you talk about 6'3", 230 pounds, uh, a guy that we just raw at defensive end, but has a lot of tools, has a lot of skill set. Look forward to being able to work with him. Trevor Brown, D-tackle from Waverly, Nebraska, first came onto the scene uh, at team camp a couple years ago. Uh, Waverly had come up here a number of times. Very successful football program in the state of Nebraska. Trevor is a uh, one of the top wrestlers, heavyweight wrestlers in the state of Nebraska. Just got second uh, at a big meet in Council Bluffs, which is uh, kind of a regional meet with Missouri, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Iowa schools there. Um, very competitive young man. Looking forward to have him. Alante Burley, uh, one of the few kids outside of our real kind of our footprint. Uh, Alante played tight end, played D end. We envision him growing into a defensive tackle for us down the road. Um, explosive, quick twitch. Uh, would remind you of uh, uh, maybe a Javier Derrett, a Eli Mostard a little bit. Just one of those guys that has a little snap to him uh, and hopefully can be one of those dynamic three techniques for us. Uh, the next, next young man is a familiar last name, uh, John Kayser. Uh, John, again, from Brothers of James brother of Rachel, who works in our recruiting department, and uh, excited to have, have him. Uh, he is the youngest of 10 brothers, or 10 brothers and sisters. Uh, I think all his brothers played football. A few of them even played for Coach Edberg at St. Cloud. Uh, a couple of them went to the Ivy Leagues, Harvard and Yale, uh, and I'm sure he's a ch uh, chip off the old block. Uh, Hard-nosed kid, played about every position he could for his high school this year, and really excited to have him. Uh, if he's anything like James or like the other Kaysers, he's going to fit in unbelievably well. Uh, Logan Larson, defensive tackle from the same high school as Toby. Um, very seldom do you recruit two kids from one high school, but uh, it just so happened that we had both kids at camp that really showed out. They did a great job. Logan's 6'2", 250 pounds right now. Uh, again, an interior defensive lineman going to be really good for us uh, down the road. Last couple of D linemen, Josh Magan, a defensive end from Shakopee, Minnesota. Shakopee's had some of their best football uh, of, of late. Ray Belton's their head football coach, or excuse me, Ray Benton is their head football coach, does a really good job, used to be at Holy Angels. Uh, interesting fact, Josh, as a junior, was 6'4", 290. And right now, again, he came to camp just – or was on campus this weekend. He's probably 6'5", 240 pounds right now. So, again, it tells you over the course of a year, these kids can change. And, you know, will he be a D tackle? Uh, will he be an offensive tackle? I don't know right now, but I know I'm really happy and really excited to have him uh, in our program. Last defensive line – or two left, I guess. Kelton McCaslin uh, and Gannon Williams, both defensive ends. Kelton is from uh, St. Charles East. Uh, another dynamic defensive end that had offers from all over the country, really. Dad had been in college football. Um, go back to the NCC days, dad used to be the defensive coordinator at Nebraska Omaha. Uh, and so I've gotten to know Brad, uh, Coach McCaslin, really well through my years. Uh, when I was at Winona State, uh, we'd visit with them, talk some defense. Uh, and so it's great to have him and his family join us. And then Gannon Williams. Uh, Gannon's, both his brothers played at the University of Northern Iowa. And we finally got one. Uh, to make the right pick and come up to NDSU. Uh, outstanding defensive lineman, off uh, tight end, a little bit of everything uh, from Marshalltown, Iowa. Marshalltown, Iowa is just uh, probably about a half hour outside of Des Moines, uh, central, uh, central Iowa. Uh, and then a couple kids left, uh, linebackers, Austin Altopeter, a young man from Moorhead, Kind of had an up and down senior year, dealt with some injuries, but is on the mend. Really excited about him. Can play Will, can play Mike. Um, very dynamic athlete. Jacob Kelly, linebacker from Bemidji. Big, long kid. Came on his official visit this weekend. The, the dining center and Coach Kramer, he might, the de evolution of man, he might have his hand in the ground pretty soon. Uh, 6'3, 215 pounds. I could see him being a defensive end down the road as well. And then Britt Sentfer. Uh, Britt is a. Uh, a linebacker from St. Mary's High School. Uh, those of you who know St. Mary's High School, a lot of Bison influence over there with Coach Schmeeker. And so I'm sure Coach Schmeeker uh, is thrilled to have uh, 
Britt coming here to NDSU to play for the Bison. Uh, we'll be playing outside linebacker, kind of our Sam uh, slot area defender for us when we're in some of our base personnel. Last linebacker is Nate Stalling, uh, inside linebacker from uh, Brainerd, Minnesota, came to camp. One of those, again, we, we've had a lot of them through the years, one of those young men that play quarterback. But we're going to make the transition and have him be a linebacker for us. He's currently 6'2", 220. Uh, you know, essentially they ran a, a wildcat-like offense. Um, and so he was downhill running. But I think that's going to convert really well to being either a Mike or a Will for us in our system right here. And then lastly, uh, defensive backs. Again, talking about another legacy, Hudson Arts. Uh, dad played here for us uh, back in the 90s. And uh, I think everyone in Fairmont is unbelievably excited. Uh, I, I think they enjoyed their trip to Shields this weekend to load up on some green and yellow gear. Um, and I'm sure Shields was extremely happy to have him. He, it's, you know, guys like him, you know, who, you know, the son of Kelly who played here, but those, those legacy, it doesn't surprise that he was the first paperwork we had in this morning. We did probably 701 today. I mean, it, it, he must have wrote his name as fast as he could, took a picture and had it to Ian. You know, before the clock ticked to 701, that's how excited he was, and and uh, he'll play safety for us, probably strong safety, get in the mix, be good for him next year. I, I'm excited to know that Michael Tutsi will be back, and he'll have one year to learn on, behind Michael. Uh, Darius G uh, Givens, uh, a DB from Champlin Park. Again, Champlin's been really good to us over the years. Uh, didn't have the most successful season, but this young man can play either corner or safety for us, and I'm talking free safety, strong safety. Came to camp. He's six one, hundred almost two hundred pounds. Ran a four five, thirty six, thirty seven inch vertical. One of the most athletic individuals that I've seen at our camp in the last eight years. Um, and so, super, had had a number of offers in the league, and really excited to have him. And I know his family's excited to be here as well. Keegan Huber from Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, over there on the uh, East Coast, uh, going to be a corner for us. Nice football player. Um, excited to have him. And then lastly, Drew Klein. The only specialist we signed this year, uh, Drew, is an outstanding, had over uh, 30 kick, uh, touchbacks this year on his kickoff duties. Um, always need someone to drive the football. Uh, if they don't return it, uh, if they want to start at the 25 every snap or, or every 0 and 10, that's a positive for us. And uh, really excited about the class. Uh, I think Ian gave me a stat 90% of these kids were on campus at camp at some point. Uh, again, this year we expanded to two individual camps. So, that number probably fits that a little bit. Our goal is always to elevate our depth, continue to improve on what we have, uh, continue to challenge what we have. Um, a lot of the walk-ons that are, that are incorporated in here, I think all of them had multiple Division II NSIC offers, uh, MIAA offers. Uh, some had preferred walk-ons somewhere else, maybe a Power Five or another uh, F, or FCS program, but uh, I think we did exactly that. We added depth along the line of scrimmage. We added some really good skill kids, but we improved our overall talent level of our football team today. With that, I'm going to open it up for questions. No, we're not going to let you off the hook. You skipped over somebody's bio. Can you talk about a young man from Cheyenne High School, I believe? Is it, is it pronounced Entz? It is. Uh, he's okay. He gets his athleticism from his mom, and uh, – he probably gets his disposition from his dad at times, but uh, we're excited to have him. Now, you got to keep in mind, Kellen knows more about this football program than probably the majority of our staff, the, all of our recruits. Um, he's been a bison for eight years. Um, but one of the unique things that, that, and it was the help of the staff and Ian, of course, is we made him go through the same process everybody else did. So there was probably a, a dozen phone calls that he got from me that I introduced myself as Coach Entz. Um, there were letters that he got from our staff. Uh, it, 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 you know, it's always a, a sticky situation. We go back to camp. We made him work out at four different positions in one day. And we, we, we put him through the ringer. It wasn't easy. And then I put it on our – guys, is he good enough to be part of it? And once the staff said yes, then I knew we were okay. But I wasn't going to make the decision because of being dad. Of course I want to be around my son. So – I'm excited to have him. I think it will sink in more when he probably moves on campus this summer. I know it'll sink in for his mom, uh, you know, when he's packing up and, and getting ready to move into the LLC with the other freshmen. But um, his, his, his younger brother asked him if 
I'm listed as dad or Coach Ensign in his cell phone. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of wondering what that does say. It is such a, such a tough spot, though. And, and I'm sure there just, you know, the, the want, obviously, to have your son there. But so to, to have that natural reaction from your coaches, from your staff, um, and then to be able to also, on the dad's side of it, still have it be special for your son. Because sure. you don't want him to be cheated out of that recruiting process either. Nope. And, and so he went through it with a couple other schools out there. And those schools did a tremendous job in the process. And he made his decision when, when he wanted to. And uh, he kind of told our staff that he wasn't going to make it until his season was over. Um, I think the, the state championship was more important to him than any decision. That's just the type of person he is. But before this all happened, probably about a, a little, maybe less than a year ago, uh, I talked to Mark Farley. Uh, I worked for Coach Farley at UNI, and both his sons were there. Uh, and then I talked to Kirk Ferentz. Uh, just a quick phone call and said, Coach, what do you think of having your boys play for you? And uh, both of them with a the resounding, it, it's a, something you never want to, don't, you got to make sure he's there. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm sure he's seen both sides. He's been around enough. He knows, he knows when I'm ready to probably lose my cool, and he knows when it's a good time to joke around with me. So I'm looking forward to it. He's going to have to come in and compete. He knows a lot of, a lot of the teammates already. It's going to be probably just a little different transition. But at the same time, uh, I tell our team all the time the expectations I have for our players are the same as I have for my boys at home. And, so he's going to fit just right in. Land on wide receiver for him, or is that still pretty fluid? It's fluid. Just from camp, he came here again. We had him work out at linebacker, tight end, DB, and wide receiver. And wide receiver was a place where I think early in the year he was probably going to see a lot of time. Got banged up early in his, his high school career and kind of became just a, a one-way player, which was fine. Played on some tight end and some goal line stuff, but. Uh, Showed that he has good hands, has good speed, ran low 4-7. We had 4-6-8, you know, in there. Big, long, 6-3, 200 pounds right now. So, um, But I, I think there's some other people that are, you know, could he be a DN? Is he going to be a tight end? What is he? Um, we'll figure all that out. We'll see how the dining center and Coach Kramer react to him. A little odd for you guys not to take a tailback. Yeah. Part of the reason is just the depth we have in that group right now. And we're not done, of course. You know, there's still a lot going on. You're never done recruiting. Um, you know, just we didn't feel like there was a back that we necessarily needed to go after uh, at this time. We, we don't have a senior uh, that's healthy. Uh, Seth Wilson uh, is a senior, but at this time is, is not healthy with his knee, of course. And, you know, I think next year the, the oldest uh, running back we're going to have in, on our roster is a junior. And so felt like this was a year because of not knowing what's coming back, trying to make sure our money could go as far as we could. After this time last year, you guys out of the portal added Quincy, Tamaric, Gabe Lloyd, Gerard Vines, Braden, and Buto. Do you have, not necessarily a similar shopping list, but do you have a portal shopping list of spots where you're kind of maybe looking? We, we do. We do at this time. We, we, we have to. Uh, again, when it first came out, and I think the portal, about the same time I became head coach, became a, a reality. You can sit there and try to fight it, or you can make it work for you. And I think we've made it work for us. Um, but by no means are we wholesaling, moving that direction. But I do think you see some teams, even some in our league, that that is the recruiting. Is I mean, They're in a kid that comes into the portal that doesn't get an offer from schools X, Y, and Z. So you know who's leaning on the portal for instant improvement versus we're trying to develop it so we can maintain the high level of football that we've been able to play. But I I anticipate there's always kids out there that uh, maybe have a – one of the unique things, Ross, is because of the portal, there's a lot of kids that sometimes go in that we have great connections with because we recruited them out of high school – it, became, it was down between this school and us. Boy, wouldn't it be fun to go back and play for NDSU? And we'll see. It has to be the right fit. It has to be the right person. Uh, I think you see the names that you listed off, they, were, they all fit in pretty well. Um, they didn't rock the boat. Um, we did our due diligence just like we would with a high school kid. Very in-depth, very transparent recruiting uh, that we go through here. Any specific positions where you feel like you might need a veteran? I, I'm not going to get into that right now. Seven guys play in the Minnesota football all-star game. That's the most of anybody else. You describe, obviously, the how 
I know you always hit the Twin Cities, but the level of player in Minnesota this year that was able to come to your school? It, yeah, I got a picture. I believe it was on Saturday morning, maybe Friday night, of all seven of them dressed to the nine, uh, ties, suits on. And, and I was, dang, I was impressed. I, I didn't think of it. I knew we had signed. I mean, we got 13 kids from the state of Minnesota, and I'm extremely excited about all of them. But then when I saw those seven that were going to represent NDSU um, in the All-Star game, I was really, really excited. And just the, the caliber of young men, um, I was sent some, some cut-ups or highlights from different parents and things, and uh, it was fun to see when kids were making tackles, they were throwing the horns up and um, I think those seven guys created a pretty special bond, and the relationship they had from that week of preparation, um, I, I think, will be invaluable as we move forward. Sweating out between last week or even the last four months and today, was there anybody in particular well, saying to get you guys? You guys are fully aware. I mean, we lost a couple guys. Um, we're recruiting at a, at a trying to recruit at a higher level. Uh, we're trying to go after kids that uh, uh, are, are strict mid-major type of kids and when it's a trickle down effect. Uh, I'm not being braggadocious by any means, I'm not trying to pat our staff on the back or myself on the back, but when, when people lose kids at the power five level, I guarantee or I, I have a good inclination that they probably know who's on our committed list. Um, I think there's a lot of thought process out there that if they're good enough to play for the Bison or you could even say good enough to play for the upper half of the Missouri Valley. They're probably good enough to play for us. You know, Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo area, kind of how important is it for you guys to lock down that talent in your own backyard? I, I, extremely important. Um, part of the, you know, I'm going to probably get on my soapbox here a little bit. I think the level of football in Fargo, Moorhead has, in the, or in West Fargo, when I say that, has dramatically increased in the eight, nine years that I've been here. I remember going to, you know, games when when I had no horses in the race, but just going to watch. And I think compared to then versus now, you're seeing a lot more talent. Uh, I think you see that in the recruiting process. There's kids going places from this area. Um, Coach Feeney over in Moorhead's doing a tremendous job. Coach Newton, uh, you know, all the coaches in the area. Uh, you know, Shanley moving up a class, doing unbelievable good things. Um, I think that's exciting for Fargo. It'll be, you know, you add Horace to the mix a couple years from now. Um, that's good. I, I hope Fargo's known as a football town. Uh, I love it when we can sign kids just from right here. And, and I tell you what I love even more is when you sign kids who've dreamt of being Bison. Speaking of kids who wish they were being Bison, you know, you mentioned those legacy uh, kids. Kind of how important is it? Is, how special is it for you to be able to bring them on so they can add to, you know, that family legacy aspect? Well, I think one – they have to be able to compete at this level. Um, just to bring them here, just to say because someone else attended isn't fair to them or us. But when they're talented enough, I think it's really important. Um, and I think I think the parents truly appreciate how we go about it. I think if you, you look at a couple, two, three of these people that are, are, are legacy recruits, we made it all about the recruits. We weren't recruiting Eric Hegerly. Eric's had his time here. We were. This was about Carson. Um, this was about Hudson. Um, you know, I'm, I'm missing one right here real quick, and I don't want to um, – who's the other one? Gorse. You know, his – you know, dad was a track coach here. So, I mean, it, we made it about them, not about the, the legacy. That's not something we really connect with a whole lot. Um, we want to make it about their experience and, and, and their situation recruits these days about the process, even their interactions, how it's all working for them and what they're hearing from you about what they, why they want to be a bison? Well, I think, I think parent, you know, you're hearing feedback from the kids, from the parents, uh, of course, opportunity to win championships and play at a high level, uh, of course, uh, is always intriguing to, to student athletes. Uh, I think the connection, the relationships that our coaches, uh, our support people make with these student athletes is one of the driving factors for parents to give their approval for their sons to come here. Uh, I think our coaches do a great job of not just getting to know them as football players, but getting to know brothers and sisters and grandparents and where you're from, what you're doing, 
Um, what do you want to study? You know, get there's a story for every kid, and trying to peel back a few pages and, and get to know them on a on a personal level, uh, that takes time. That that that's hard to do. Um, the easy way would just recruit numbers and recruit positions and call it good and hope they stay. Um, but I don't think in this day of age you can do it that way with the transfer portal. You have to you have to get, sink your claws into these kids, uh, and we're doing it. We're trying to do it with relationships. Um, I think that the, the indoor facility shows the support that this university, this community, our, our, the backing the alumni have for this program and this athletic department. Uh, having people like President Brashani, Matt Larson around in our locker room after games, after we win, visiting with family and, and, and recruits beforehand. Uh, I think it sees kids and parents see that everyone's invested in this program. It's not Matt Ensis program. It's not uh, Chris Kleiman's. It's not Craig Bowles. It's North Dakota State's program. Us, but other recruiting services are super high on both Carson and Mackay. You get a little bit deeper into what those two do so well and, and why they are so exciting. Well, you know, I think both of them have great length. The thing that uh, I think became very evident last spring during the track season was Carson Hegerly's speed. That was probably, of course, the question mark. You know, there can't be a kid from Fargo that fast. Um, but all of a sudden he ran a 10 800 in spring track, which I think is an excellent time for a kid who doesn't major in track. You know, he's a football player that's really good at basketball. Um, then, you know, this – this off season or this summer, he went to some other places and popped some big four four times, and then all of a sudden, when you're six two, and you can run like that, that's pretty dynamic. Um, you know, length is a is a difference maker, but when you're long and can run, pretty special. Same with Makai. Makai runs really good routes, um, and I think can get in and out of breaks, can go up and get it. He's, a again, a 6'3 wide receiver that uh, uh, we could take advantage of if he's on the backside of three by one, um, outside receiver. Carson can be, again, a little bit of that motion guy, running him through the backfield. He has some of that dynamic ability and ability to carry the ball like that. But both of them are big-time players, excited to, to get them on campus. Recruiting pitch to kids like that because I, you, get, they're not gonna, you don't throw the ball 70 times a game. I mean, no, you're, you're, run, you're running it 62 times a game. Well, so what's the pitch to <laughs> that? That when we throw it, we're going to make it count. You know, and and we have to. Um, you know, we're we're going to continue to find ways to to get to get the ball to, on the perimeter and get it to our receivers. We need to we need to continue to work on it. Is it you know? We are not a finished product. Are there things we need to continue to work on offensively and defensively? Of course, there is. Um, but these guys are going to help us. Uh, they're going to continue to be able to pull defensive structure apart by having – can you imagine Makai and Carson both as the outside receivers? You know, are you going to play us in single high and allow us to, to take advantage of, of a post player? You know, it, it'll be – but you play too high, that means you're in seven-man spacing and now you can't, you know, run fit the box, of, you know, appropriately or with enough bodies. So trying to force, force people's hands. Um, and I think the other thing – and again, I'm knock on wood. I think he's going to have a great opportunity. But you, you look at Darius Shepard. You look at uh, Christian Watson. Um, you know, in the in the last three or four years, we have two NFL wide receivers at a school that runs a football. You know, I and I also think what we do offensively emulates a lot of NFL programs, NFL organizations from the from how we structure our play calls to how we practice some of the route concepts. And I think there's a reason why and. We also make our best players be on special teams, and I think NFL programs appreciate that. I don't know if you need to get into specifics, but you lose the two kids to the Power Five late. At least from what I could tell, you didn't immediately go out there with that money and, and get kids. You know you're going to have some attrition after the season's over. You had some question marks with, okay, how many of our 23 seniors yep. are coming back? Do you anticipate a pretty large spring class? No, I don't think, uh, Ross, I don't know if we'll, we'll ever have a big spring class from here on out. It could be two, three, four kids, maybe, uh, maybe not. Uh, you know, because the other piece that, of course, there's always attrition and there's always numerous reasons for it. Um, lack of playing time, buried, lost the love of the game. Uh, there's other priorities in your life. Um, but, you know, the other thing that, that we have to keep in mind is, 
I got to take care of the kids that have played really well for us too. Uh, we got some kids that are that are playing a lot of a lot of snaps for us, a lot of critical snaps in games that are still in walk-on roles. And so um, we always talk about going to get more. Uh, at some point, you got to take care of the ones that have been taking care of you. Difficult was roster allocation. Just off of Ross's question, where you're trying to figure out who's coming back, guys that are you still have 2020 redshirt freshmen that really haven't played yet, and how much do you want to? Add on for 2022. How how was juggling that? Well, it's it it's unique. I probably look at it every day. I don't know if I have any answers. I just look at it and just like, how are we going to sort through all this? Um, you know, we have an unbelievably large sophomore class right now because of the COVID year, and then you add the the redshirt year for our class of 21. Well, they're all the same age right now. Then they're they're all sophomores eligibility wise. We have 32 sophomores now. Some of that will change. And, and adjust based on outside circumstances. But um, my number one thing is making sure we always have the appropriate depth. We always have the right pieces for fall camp. Uh, that's such a critical time of the year for us with the, how we double rep and things. Um, you know, uh, but it'll be interesting. I mean, interesting. Now, I feel good about our seniors right now, but, you know, I'll probably have one more conversation with a few of our outgoing seniors just to make sure that that's, this is what they want to do. Um, you know, it's always easier said than done during the course of a, a middle of the week during practice. And, you know, it's game 12, and then all of a sudden you're out of football for a week. Hey, you know, I'm going to miss this more than I anticipate. Um, but, you know, th that I know I would have played as long as I could have if someone would have, you know, said I could have had a fifth year or, or whatever. And I think there's a lot of kids out there that wish they could have had the opportunity to play more. Receive recruits, they have to block. I mean, do you well, they know. They, they know. know. It, it's on film. It's on film. They know. You know, that's, that's part of it. You know, there's, you know, you could pull up a season highlight of Phoenix Sproles and his blocking. Yeah. You have to, at NDSU, you have to learn how to be great without the football. Quarterback Nathan Hayes. I mean, these kids aren't dumb. They see you bring in a, a blue chipper like Cole Payton last year. What's your conversation like with him and, and, kind of his opportunity to compete? Just that. We're going to give you an opportunity to compete. Uh, no preconceived notion that, that Cole's the guy. Uh, you need to come in and, and, and be ready to go and challenge and, and, and learn. Uh, the, the room's the room. We're going to get along really well. We're going to help each other grow. We're going to help each other develop. But when we're out there and, and it's in 11 on 11 or 7 on 7 or whatever segment it might be, you need to try to be the best you you can be. Iron sharpens iron, and the the better our backup is, the better our starter has to be. You know? and, and and Nathan's a very talented young man. I, if I remember correct, when we were recruiting him, I think he had an offer to Kentucky for baseball as a pitcher. So, I mean, he, he's got he got a hose on him. For the Minnesota guys, was the U.S. Bank Stadium game sold at all for the, the opportunity you guys are going to play there in 23 for the oh, Minnesota kids? I think for Minnesota kids in general, we talk about it. Uh, you know, I think a lot of them remember, some of them were there when we played at Target Field. We, we have great representation down in the cities. We got great alumni. I think you're seeing more and more of our young former football players heading to, to Minneapolis for a few years before they come back to, uh, to Fargo. Um, but I, I think there's a, there's a tremendous amount of alumni support down there as well. And um, it, it's exciting. I think these kids will be excited when that game finally gets here. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon.